Where do we begin? Instructional design can be a simple practice. It can also be a complex process. It generally involves finding the most effective ways to provide knowledge and skills to learners. If we look at instructional design as a big and complex process, then we have to consider that tackling big and complex processes is difficult to do unless we break it down into smaller parts. If we look at instructional design as a simple operation, then we may approach it from a different angle. We may have to look at instructional design in a situational context and take an approach based on the situation. Let's start by taking a few minutes to look at instruction, instructional design, and models of instructional design. Let's begin by considering a few terms. What is instruction? What is training? What is teaching? And what is education? We often use these terms in a broad sense to describe ways in which people learn. Start with instruction. What is your definition of instruction? Experts such as Driscoll have defined instruction as intentional facilitation of learning toward identified learning goals. Others, such as Gagne, describe instruction this way. The purpose of instruction is to help people learn. Using words and phrases such as intentional, facilitation, and identify learning goals. That sounds like a plan. For our purposes, let's use this definition of instruction. Purposeful activity intended to cause, guide, or support learning. This definition will serve us in that we'll see instruction as something that has a purpose, and the goal of the instruction is to support learning. So, moving forward, when we think of instruction, let's think purposeful activity intended to cause, guide, or support learning. How about training? What is training? Smith and Reagan tell us that we often think of training as instructional experiences that are focused on individuals acquiring very specific skills that will likely be applied almost immediately. Think of jobs. We often think of training as preparing people for jobs. But we also think of training when we are providing specific skills to learners to use in life, don't we? Training is specific and focused and is often a subset of some larger objective. We've attempted to define instruction, and often people use the terms teaching and instruction interchangeably. While we've defined instruction as purposeful activity intended to cause, guide, or support learning, let's think of teaching as learning experiences that are facilitated by a human being or teacher. So instruction includes all experiences that are facilitated by some form of support, and teaching is that part of instruction where a teacher is essential to the instruction. Some forms of training may include an instructor or a teacher, so teaching and training may overlap. As a whole, instruction includes both training and teaching. How is the term education defined? We sometimes may feel like education occurs without a teacher or without training. Other times, education is very formal, such as that which occurs in the classroom. Sometimes education is informal, such as those life experiences from which we learn. In the whole, education is a broad term, so we see instruction, training, and teaching as some subset of education, don't we? Let's pause for a moment and ask why the teaching expands past the instruction spectrum and into the whole of education. Why do you think teaching is depicted like that? I'd suggest that teaching sometimes occurs outside of instruction, yet it is still within the realm of education. If instruction is focused, educational experiences, then we know there are times when teaching happens outside of a focused experience, don't we? How about those times when a person teaches another about something because of their actions? That's teaching, isn't it? 
OK, we have a working definition of instruction. How about design? What is design? A lookup of the word design in a dictionary will produce something like this. A plan or drawing produced to show the look and function or workings of something. Take instruction and look at how instruction is designed or how an end product is produced. If the instruction is purposeful activity intended to cause, guide, or support learning, instructional design is the plan of the purposeful activity. If we look at instructional design as a set of rules or procedures for creating instruction, then we can further ask, what is an instructional design model? A model is a simplified representation used to explain the workings of a real-world system or event. The main goal of an instructional design model or process is to construct a learning environment in order to provide the learners with the conditions that support learning. Piskurich suggests that instructional design is student-centered, goal-centered, focused on meaningful performance, can be measured in a reliable and valid way, is iterative and self-correcting, and is typically done by a team. There are dozens of instructional design models with several variations on many of the models. The ADDI model has been a very popular model and some experts have made their own version of the ADDI model. We will be studying the principles of instructional design and for most of what we'll be doing during this course will look very much like the ADDI model. We will also look closely at emerging models which take a rapid approach to the practice of instructional design. The newer approaches are beginning to take into account the situational nature of the field. This field continues to change and what has traditionally been known as instructional design is beginning to be referred to as instructional technology. We'll talk more about instructional technology as we get into this course, but let's start with a more structured approach by looking closer at the ADDI model of instructional design. The ADDI model of instructional design is a systematic model consisting of five phases, analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. The model's original authors are unknown, but there are multiple variations and versions of the model that exist today. With this model, each step of the process feeds the next. During the analysis phase, the designer identifies many things including the learning problem, goals and objectives, the needs of the learner, the existing knowledge of the learner, and the environment in which learning will take place, and constraints. Additionally, during the analysis phase, the designer will look at the delivery options. The key word to this phase of the instructional design process is identify. During the design phase, the designer goes through the process of specifying learning objectives, storyboards, prototypes, the user interface, and the content. The key word in this phase of the process is specify. During the development phase, the content and the learning materials are produced, all based on the design phase. The key word for this phase is produce. During the fourth phase, the implementation phase, the content from the development is put into production. The training for the learners and for the instructor or teacher are put into place and used. During the final and fifth phase, the evaluation phase, the designer assesses criteria used and gathers learner feedback. There are two types of evaluation that are generally conducted during the evaluation phase formative evaluations, and summative evaluations. Formative evaluations are conducted throughout with a main purpose of looking into continuously improve the program or instruction. Summative evaluation, in contrast, consists of administering criteria-based assessments and gathering of learner feedback. So there you have it, the five phases of the ADDI model of instructional design. Remember, there are five phases. 
analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. I know that was a lot to absorb in just a few short minutes. Don't worry, we'll be coming back to all these phases throughout the course, as well as looking at other models and variations on the ADDIE approach. By the end of this course, you'll have been exposed to some of the different models, created your own instruction using an ADDIE approach, and will begin to form your own model of instructional design. At this point, you might ask why study instructional design at all. Some experts would suggest that using a model or process is the best way to get somewhere. Others might argue that using some system is better than none. I'd simply pause here and ask you if you've ever had an experience where you finished a course or class and realized that the exam questions did not match any of the material that was covered in the course, or you left the training session where you felt that you did not learn anything, or the material was too simple or too complex. If you had those experiences, then I'd suggest that part of the failing was likely due to either a poor or non-existent instructional design process. Let's dive into the world of instructional design and begin to use a systematic and thoughtful approach as we develop our own instruction.